What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking summertime frog fishing. Frog fishing in depth, all the different types of frogs, when to use certain frogs in certain situations, talking about rods and reel and line, all of it. Today's video, we're going in depth frog fishing. Let's go. So a week or so ago, uh, I was out on Chickamauga and got on a decent frog bite and uh, had a lot of questions on that video about uh, adjusting reels and frogs and all sorts of stuff. So today's video, hopefully I answer all your guys' questions. We're going to go completely in depth on frog fishing uh, because it's really not that simple. It can be as simple as taking the heaviest rod you got, tying the heaviest braid you got, tying on a frog and going and fishing the thickest stuff you, you can find and catching bass out of it. But there's so many different things to uh, uh, tips and tricks and things to adjust to uh, produce more fish. So today's video, an all in depth video on frog fishing. It can be very, very simple and it can be very, very uh, tricky, right? There's so many different things you can do. You can be throwing the, the right frog in the wrong situation or the wrong frog in the wrong situation. So hopefully today's video, I'll cover all of that stuff for you. Uh, today's gonna be a good one. It's hot out, sitting out here in a, in a lily pad field. Uh, it just makes you, makes you wish you were throwing a frog. So uh, like I said, a couple videos ago, a couple weeks ago, had that frog fishing video. Had, you guys had some questions, so uh, I'm gonna cover as much of that stuff as I can today. I'm gonna get distracted because it seems like every time I'm out here filming, fish are blowing up around me. So. Uh, frog fishing, I'm going to try and simplify it as best as possible. You know, you see this box right here. This is my boat frog fishing box. You know, there's probably seven or eight different brands of frogs in here, different styles of frogs. I mean, so many different types of frogs. And uh, I'm going to break it all down for you the different categories. I kind of separate my frogs into four or five main categories and the different types of situations you know when would you throw a popping frog versus you know something with some paddle feet on it or uh, a finesse frog where's that little little guy you know something something a little smaller so today's video we're gonna cover all of that stuff because frog fishing can be as simple as, as you'd like it to be but it can also be as advanced as you'd like it to be so today's video is for everybody gonna simplify it for you and make it advanced for you <clears throat> all at the same time so let me simplify this box I'm gonna organize this box into the four or five categories I talked about and then we'll go through each category and explain when the different types of frogs really work best in which conditions you know I got pop well starting off I have my all-around frogs those are your frogs you're gonna be throwing almost all the time right my all-around frogs then I have my popping frogs, you know, frogs with a, a cupped face, something you're gonna walk a little bit slower, but popping frogs. I have my open water frogs. I have my mat frogs. And then I have my finesse frogs. You know, finesse fishing a frog kind of seems like an oxymoron, right? You know, power fishing a little finesse bait, but those are the main categories. Like I said, my everyday all around frogs, my mat frogs, my open water frogs, uh, finesse frogs, and popping frogs. So kind of, I'll organize these, I'll show you some of my favorite baits and explain, like I said, wh why, when, where, why, all that sort of stuff. And we'll just kind of go through it, talk about colors, talk about actions, all of that stuff. So uh, I'm gonna organize this, I'll get right back to you. All right, got all that stuff kind of situated in a pile so I can uh, better showcase these for you. But uh, let's first talk about uh, frog fishing. You know, what is it? Why do you do it? And uh, why is it so much fun? So summertime, as, as your body of water or the fishery that you're fishing uh, typically gets a lot more vegetation. You know, you can see out here we have this tulip pad field all the way, I mean, a couple hundred yards, all the way back to the back. So <clears throat> throwing a topwater frog over the vegetation is sometimes the easiest and the most fun way to get big bass out of thick, heavy cover. 
and you're gonna do it power on power. Heavy rod, heavy line, uh, a bait with heavy hooks, you're going straight braid, and you're gonna hook these fish and you're gonna get them out of the vegetation, out of the thick, heavy stuff that they are hiding in and ambushing their, their, their food. So, summertime, it's hot out. They like to get real deep into that thick grass. They like to get under overhang hangs. They like to get below, you know, tule pads, that sort of stuff. So you need a bait that uh, that is not only weedless, that can get through the stuff or above the stuff, around the stuff. But when you actually hook those fish, you have uh, everything powerful enough to get those fish out. But uh, if you guys are, uh, if you guys love topwater fishing and you've never thrown a soft body or a hollow body frog, you guys are definitely messing, missing out. Uh, let me show you a frog. You know, it's a, it's a rubber or a plastic body, typically fairly soft. soft. Now this is a new frog that I've been playing around with and uh, it's kind of funny I picked this one up. This is actually a, a scum frog and I will tell you out of the package that is by far the softest frog I have ever grabbed. It's so soft, uh, very, it walks very easily. But anyways, uh, it's a soft hollow belly, belly frog. Typically, two really start uh, stout hooks and you have your legs. Later on in this video, I'll give you guys a couple different tips to help uh, walk your frog, to give your frog better action. But you have your, your soft legs. Some frogs have, uh, where are they at? Some, some frogs have different types of legs. Some have little kicker feet. Some are cupped to walk like, a, like an old jitter, jitterbug. And then some are just basic hollow body with, uh, with legs. So, so many different choices on the market and that's what today's video is gonna be about is how to simplify it and, and pick the best out of each category. But if you find yourself in those situations you know the bass are in that thick stuff and you love throwing top water, grab yourself a heavy duty rod, some line, and a hollow body frog and you will have some of the most fun fishing top water that you've ever had. So uh, let's talk about the frogs themselves. Hands down, my number one frog that I always have with me is gonna be this guy right here. This is the River to Sea Bullywa 2. It's a second generation of this frog. They made some adjustments to it the last couple of years. Um, really soft. You know, it's there's so many different frogs on the market, and you got to play around with frogs that uh, you know have good hookup ratios. For, you know, a lot of times you'll get bit on a frog and you'll swing, and you'll miss. So you got to get a frog that has good hook penetration. You know, you want something that uh, when those fish bite, that hook point's right there, and a stout enough hook that when you hit them with this heavy duty gear, you don't bend out the hooks. But that is that is a, our, our all around number one frog. You can see, looking at the face of it, it's got a little keel on it, which makes it, makes it sit upright in the water and just really easy, just like you're walking a, a topwater spook or, or some kind of walking bait, it's just a twitch, twitch, twitch and you want this frog going side to side. You want to throw it into the thickest stuff when you get to that shade line or that grass line, whatever it may be, you just want this frog going side to side to side, not moving, not uh, covering a lot of distance to you per se, but you want to stay in that, that, uh, that strike zone, that key area as much as possible. But a frog with a good keel on it makes it easier to walk side to side. So this guy right here, this is a, an everyday frog. Now this frog, with that said, because it has that keel on it, is not gonna be good up. It's gonna be good, it's not gonna be great up on your real thick, heavy mats. Because of that keel, it's gonna want to roll one side or the other. It doesn't have as flat of a belly, uh, and, and with that, you get a little bit of roll, and now you're, you're possibly exposing those hooks to the vegetation you're trying to fish through, and you get hung up a um, little more easy. So, but if you're fishing sparse grass or grass lines or open water, that is hands down our number one frog. Number two, I picked it up right off the bat. Um, this guy right here, 
playing around with this guy. I'm very, very impressed. I'm kind of new to the whole scum frog thing. You know, I used to, I remember their old frogs, but uh, this thing it blows me away by the action and just how soft it is. You know, it's very important that your frogs are soft because you don't want to have a lot of hard, thick plastic in the way of those hook points when those fish, you know, eat that frog. You want to get that plastic out of the way and get some bite on those on those on those fish. So look at that hook gap. Again, very, very soft, very impressed with this guy right here. If you guys haven't tried these guys, definitely give these a shot. Blown away. This guy, and I did this video a couple years ago. This has been my favorite for a long time. Uh, this is that uh, live target frog. You know, I've done some modifications. I've trimmed the legs and stuff, but you can see it's another soft body frog, not nearly as soft as that scum, scum frog. But these three, these three right here, the, the Bullywa 2, the Scum Frog, and that Live Target are awesome everyday frogs. If you're just going to pick up one frog and go to the lake or go to the pond, whatever it may be, uh, those three are by far my three favorite. One other one, other one I will say is uh, really good is actually the Spro Frog. This guy right here, again, trim the legs. Um, very slender profile, so it's kind of longer, longer and narrower. So again, it's easier to walk. Doesn't roll over very easy. You can see it's not doesn't have that real apparent or obvious keel like that bullywa, but it still does walk fairly well, and uh, it's it's good in, in heavier grass as well. So those I'll give you those four. So the spro, the bullywa, the scum frog and the uh, live target. If you can't find a frog in, in, that you like out of those four, um, you know, it's time to move on to something else. But those, those four are awesome. Those are my everyday frogs. So that was that pile. Now let's talk about specialty frogs or special situation frogs. You know, when you hear frog fishing, you, you at least I do, I think of heavy cover, heavy vegetation, and just power on power. Those frogs I just listed will work great, especially that bully wall out in open water. You know, walk it. If you guys have never fished a frog in open water over grass mats, definitely give it a try. But flipping it around a little bit, let's talk about uh, thick lily pads or a thick mat. You're going to want a frog that has a, uh, a less V shaped or keel of a belly. So, my mat frogs, I keep it very simple. I have two. Uh, let's start with the King Daddy. The King Daddy, I mean, look at the size of this frog. I mean, that is a full size topwater bait. I mean, look at it compared to the Bully Wall. This is a 65 size frog. Look at the King Daddy. I mean, you're talking big, hollow body frog, right? The reason that I like the King Daddy. Is there's just a lot of bait there so it makes more of a uh, commotion coming across those thick mats you know picture yourself underwater looking up at those mats you're not going to be able to see everything right you got thick vegetation in front of you, you got a, a, almost a ceiling of grass or mat cheese above you but you could see the movement because of the weight of the frog that's why I like the King Daddy it's a big presence on the surface in that stuff it doesn't have too bad of a keel on it, so it doesn't roll over as bad on the, the pads or the mats. But again, it has an awesome uh, presence that disperses and uh, shows itself very well in that thick vegetation. Another one is going to be, this is the Ish, the uh, Fat Mat Daddy. You can see almost has no keel at all, and they have an, an added uh, rattle to it. So again, those fish, thicker cover, they need some kind of disturbance on the, uh, on the surface to really find that frog. So with that said, if you're fishing through a mat and it's thick cheese, you know, you're walking it or you're, you're popping it, uh, you're bringing that frog through that mat and then you get to a less thick of an area or a thinner open area, give that frog a pause or a twitch in that opening because that is going to be the frogs are the fish's best chance to get a a, a clear um, I don't know if you guys heard that blow up or not but <laughs> a 
it, it, it gives that fish a, a better opportunity to get that frog. You know, frog fishing, you can have a lot of heartbreak. You can have a lot of explosions like that. They get your heart pumping, but they blow your frog out of the water. They completely miss it. So you want to uh, take advantage of those openings in the grass, in those mats where those fish can just get a straight shot at that frog and um, not miss it as easily. I was gonna give you this tip later on the video, but because we're kind of talking about it, a great tip, if you are frog fishing, always have some kind of uh, follow up bait. You know, if they blow up like that fish, that was like a four or five pounder that just blew up right there. I mean, within 15 feet of the boat, that fish was obviously chasing a bluegill or a shad or some kind of bait fish. Uh, but you're fishing your frog, they blow up, you miss it. You know, give that get that frog back in there. If they miss it or not, go with another follow up bait. Go with some kind of stick bait or something that has a slow, a slow fall that you can be accurate with your casts, but get in there. And uh, a lot of times, you will be able to follow up that frog blow up uh, with that finesse bait and catch that fish. You know, sometimes they won't, I don't know if they scare themselves or what, but when they come, they blow up a big hole in the mat. You know, about half the time they come back and the other half they don't. So if you can't get back in there quick and get another blow up and catch them, go in there with that Cinco or some kind of slow presentation and you'll be able to catch those fish. Sorry, trying to get to kind of getting sidetracked with these blow ups right here. But uh, so that is my the mat frog. So that fat mat daddy, and or uh, that one and the the spro the big king daddy. Now with these frogs, uh, I will. You can see that I I went and I trimmed the legs. So here here it is stock. I cut about a third of the legs off. So I make it a shorter presentation. And not only that, but I actually cut one side a little shorter so it makes it easier to walk. So that is another tip for you guys. If you guys are trimming your legs and you're having a hard time getting those frogs to walk, you can trim one set just a little shorter than the other side to kind of make it lopsided in the water and get that real good side to side action. So we talked about just my everyday frogs. We talked about mat frogs. So if you're really just gonna go fish that thick stuff, that cheese, Go with those two style frogs and definitely have a follow-up bait. Uh, what do we got now? We got, uh, I, I talked a little bit about it. I, I kind of breezed over it. But if you're a topwater fisherman and you love throwing whopper ploppers, uh, spooks, vixens, you know, your walking baits, and you haven't tried throwing a frog in the same areas, you guys are missing out. You know, everybody goes out there and they throw a whopper plopper or a buzz bait or a spook or whatever it may be, right? You're, you're more common topwater baits, but you can throw a frog over that same stuff. You don't have to be in grass to be throwing a frog. And a frog is a, it's a phenomenal bait. It's silent, obviously, unless you put rattles in it, but it's silent. It has a different action, a different sound. Uh, and it's just a lot of guys don't do it in open water or sparse grass water. So uh, try that out. If you guys love throwing top water and you haven't tried throwing a frog in open water, definitely give it a try because you'll be surprised at, at uh, what you'll catch on a frog in open water. If you're going with the frog in open water, go with that bully wad too or go with one of those easy walking frogs. You know, you're gonna walk it just like you would a spook. So little, little tangent right there, but uh, let's get back into it. So. Um, Open water frogs. This guy right here. This is one of the easiest frogs to throw. This is the Teckle Sprinker Frog. And what this is, this is pretty much a weedless whopper plopper. So you got this, this little kicker foot back there that spins, goes plop, 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 plop as you're reeling it. Uh, the, the advantage is obviously it's got the frog hooks on it so you don't have the treble hooks hanging down. But you fire this out there and you fish it just like you would a whopper plopper, but you can throw it through stuff like this or open water. Like I was talking about, that frog with a good keel on it to walk it. If you want to just throw a frog out there and just reel it back, hands down, that sprinker is a must-have. That's, that's probably my favorite open water frog if I'm just trying to cover water. 
you know, if I'm trying to pick a, a shade line apart or, uh, you know, something out there like a grass point or whatever, and I, I want that bait to stay in that strike zone longer than I'll go with that good walking frog, that bully wah or the spro. And if I want to cover water and just, you know, cast out, you know, burn this thing back and cast, cast, cast and burn up water, that guy right there, that tackle sprinker is a must have. You guys can see there's so many different types of frogs. This guy right there, that's also a tackle. I will link all of these frogs down below in the video description because I'm going through them fairly quickly. But um, some of these frogs too, if, if you're an, uh, an open water fisherman, frog fisherman, or you're fishing sparse, another boil right there, sparse grass, take a set of pliers and bend your, see those hook points? See how they're, see how they're angled up a little bit? A lot of frogs, you know, you get them out of the package and they're just straight. If you don't have to worry about the, uh, the hook points being exposed as much, take a pair of pliers and bend yourself. Give yourself, you know, a little five degree or so adjustment. Get that hook point angled up. That gives you more hook gap uh, and less bait in the way for those fish that are eating in open water. So another tip for you guys, and, and opposite, if you're fishing through this thick stuff and you're having a problem with your hooks getting hung up, take and bend your hook tips just down and in a little bit. I mean, look at some of these. This is the bully wall too, but you can see, see, see that hook gap right there? You can take and bend this down flush. So you're gonna bend them down and in uh, along the back and you will be extremely weedless. So lots of tangents today. So we talked about open water, talking about bending the hooks out, that tackle, that, that, that frog is awesome for covering water. Um, what else? Sprinker. I'm going to leave it at that. You know, we can talk about horny toads, but I feel like that's a completely different video. We'll probably do a more in-depth toad video. Um, but again, if I'm fishing open water, and I'm just trying to cover water. The same exact places that I would throw a whopper plopper but there's just too much vegetation now in the water, too much grass. That's when I'm gonna switch over to that open water, that sprinkler frog, and just cast and, and burn through that same area. Again, go with that slower walking frog if you wanna slow down, but open water frogging is so much fun, as well as throwing heavy duty stuff in this right here. So we talked about uh, my everyday frogs, we talked about kind of the open water frogs and the mat frogs, let's talk about popping frogs because there is a time and a place for a popping frog. You know, it's, it's, it's really funny. Some days they want a real subtle, natural, clear color, non-intrusive frog. And the next day they want something that's spitting and rattling and bright chartreuse green. So you, know, you gotta let the fish tell you what they want. But a popping frog, is is so much fun to throw because every twitch you know, you're getting some kind of, of movement and sound right when you're walking a frog out there 20 30 yards it's just going side to side you're just waiting for that that suck bite or that boil uh, you know just that explosion but with a popping frog every twitch you're getting bloop bloop you're getting sound you're, you're getting that resistance of the pop so I feel like for me I'm more in tune with my frog, with that popping frog. I feel like I'm more on point, if you will, because I feel like there's just a fish just staring at it, waiting for that next bloop or that next pop. So I love throwing popping frogs. Um, and, and recently, that's really what I've been throwing. Like that video last week or so, you know, I tried throwing the bully wall, that little Allen that's hands down my favorite color. I'll talk about colors here in a second. But they just weren't having it. And I switched over to the... Uh, the Gavacho, that, that poppin' frog by Jackal, it's real natural, uh, bluegill pattern. They have some great patterns. Uh, it's it's less less intrusive, I feel, and I was just, just blooping it side to side. And those fish, they weren't coming up and crushing it. They were real subtle bites, which is was why I keyed into that subtle frog, because they weren't going after that bright, bold chartreuse. Uh, but that poppin' frog, man, they were just, they were just, sucking it down and you'd give them a second and then hit them you know you had to kind of wait to make sure it wasn't a gar or something like that but uh but if your fish are being really finicky 
try a poppin' frog. You know, the Spro, this was the original poppin' frog that I threw way back when. Again, trimmed up those legs. I don't like having the legs real long. I don't want to give that fish too big of a, uh, a profile, too big of an area, too much bait to miss besides the hooks. And with the longer legs, it makes it harder to walk. So I like to really trim those legs down. Um, and you can see that right there in that Spro. So the Spro, awesome popping frog. That Gavacho, here it is in white. You can see, I usually trim this down just a little bit. I leave it a little bit longer than the two outer legs. But again, I don't want that, uh, I don't want, I mean that, that middle leg is longer than the actual bait itself with the hooks. So, um, but that Gavacho, and then the spitting wall. What's cool about this frog is it's a, it's a, I guess it'd be a power frog, right? It's not really a finesse frog. It's not a smaller profile, real stout hooks, but it's got that big cup face on it. So it, it moves a lot of water. It's got the little channels in there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So not only does it push water, but it gives air bubbles and it's just a little different sound. And Matt and I, I mean, we've, we used to smash fish on this uh, in Clear Lake. So if you're looking to throw a poppin' frog, those three, I actually got that one more, that little little gabbit to that guy right there, that's kind of newer to the market. That's that mega bass frog, real natural looking, but it's just got, it's kind of a cupped face. It's not really a poppin' frog face per se, but that spits as well. But between those three or four models, if you're looking for a poppin' frog, those are hands down my favorite. Uh, again, if you're looking for something a little more subtle, Go with that Spro, little poppin' frog, or that Gavacho. And then if you need something a little bit bigger, go with that uh, that Mega Bass or that River to Sea. You know, full size frog, lots of water movement. Uh, the benefit of throwing the poppin' frog, like I said, you get that you get that sound with each each twitch. You get that resistance of it pulling that water, that pushing that water, and uh, you just get a lot more uh, disbursement, displacement up there. On the surface to to draw those fish and get their attention. So, popping frog, you'll be surprised. Some days they want a popping frog, some days they want a subtle frog, but you got to figure out each. So at the end of this video, I would recommend grabbing at least one of each style that I talk about, and then we'll talk about colors. Get one of kind of each color of the three colors that I'm going to recommend, but three or four colors that I'm going to recommend. So try and keep it really simple. That way you have a frog for each. Uh, weather condition and vegetation condition. So last but not least, I think that's it, right? We talked about open water, we talked about mat frogs, all around frogs, popping frogs. And if you watched this video that I did a couple years ago, that's it. But I wanted to add a category uh, this year just because I feel like it's a, and it's, a, it's an emerging category, I guess. It's, it's a category of frog that I'd never really thrown until the last year or two. And that's gonna be the finesse frog category. I mean, look how small this frog is compared to, I mean, here's that mega bass that I was just showing you. I mean, look at that little guy. So much smaller presentation, such a smaller hook. Uh, everything about it, it's quieter, it's less intrusive. So I wanted to talk about the finesse frogs because believe it or not, there is a thing with finesse frogging. Yes, when you think frogging, you think heavy cover, heavy rod, 65 pound braid and just wrenching those fish in. But there's times, especially last year here on Chick, man, they would not eat a normal size frog. They wouldn't eat a popping frog. They wouldn't eat, you know, the sprinker. But you go in there with the little Kyera and they would mess it up. I don't know. I don't know if it's a bait size thing or it's just not uh, something they haven't seen. But if you guys haven't thrown a little, um, a little finesse frog, definitely get yourself one or two. What's cool about these frogs is you don't need necessarily special gear to throw them on. You can throw it on lighter braid, you can throw it on your favorite jig rod. You don't have to throw, you know, a, an extra heavy frog or, you know, frog rod or a flipping stick. But these guys flat out catch them. The other guy I was going to talk about is the 55 sized Bolliwa. So you can see, 
compared to the, I mean, this bait is straight up chewed. I don't know if you guys can see all those teeth marks. I got the paint. I'm definitely gonna do some fishing in here after this video. Another big old boil on bait right there. You can see the paint, paint is just eaten off of the cheeks, but here's that 55 sized bully wall. Almost the same size, right? So here is the, uh, here's the normal size bully wall, and here's the little 55. Again, you're gonna wanna trim those legs, but look how much smaller that is. So the finesse frog, it's, it's gotta be a, a match the hatch type of deal. Uh, you know, here on Chick, the, last year they were chasing really, really small bait, and um, we had clearer water, so that's why we went with that, uh, that little Kyara, just that real natural color, almost a ghost color, but very small presentation. Um, and had a blast. I mean, they blasted this thing. So that leads me to colors. Uh, you can see there's a ton of colors here, but if you really looked at everything I showed you, primarily there's three or four main colors. I keep it very, very simple. I will go with a white. I will go with a black. I'm talking about belly main frog, right? White, black, a chartreuse, and then some kind of natural or ghost color. Very, very simple. Four colors. Your white, your black, chartreuse or bright, and then your ghost or your clear color. You know, this is a great bluegill imitator, uh, dragonfly imitator, um, but hands down, those of you guys that have watched our channel for a long, long time, you know, chartreuse is my number one go-to frog. This is a color that we designed, Matt and I, it's called Little Allen, and it is by far our favorite. But there are times when you will catch them on a black frog or a white frog. You know, you want them, it, it depends on water color, it depends on the fish, the how aggressive and active they are. You know, if a white frog or a chartreuse frog, they're gonna see a long ways away, right? It stands out. The black frog, I will say this about the black frog, I feel like I get bigger bites on a, a black frog. Um, I really like that spro, where's it at? It's kind of a combination, black belly, white top, so when you're walking this thing, it's kind of it's it's doing side to side, but it's also rolling. So you're getting you're getting that the best of both worlds. You're getting that black, white, black, white. So um, I feel like I get bigger bites on a black frog. I don't know if it's less intrusive or I don't know why, but it it, it just seems to work that way. But I get more bites on chartreuse and white, unless it's fairly clear water, and that's when I go with the. Uh, the more realistic natural colors. So there it is guys, very in-depth but kind of short video on, uh, not short, it's 30 plus minutes long, but I didn't really dive down into each category as much as I would have liked to, but I don't want to be here uh, and have you guys watching this all day. It's, it's, frog fishing is so much fun. As you can see, there's so much to it or just go, go to your favorite sporting, sporting goods store, grab yourself a hollow-bodied frog, throw it on the, the, the stiffest rod you can with braid, and you'll have a blast. Uh, if you want to kind of dive down that rabbit hole and really get into frog fishing, you can see there's so much to it. And uh, depending on the, the type of, of vegetation you're fishing, depending on the type of frog, uh, the, the fish you're after, completely changes or determines the type of gear or the frog you're using. So start out with that chartreuse frog. If you feel like it's too much and you're, you're, you're seeing fish run from it or you're seeing fish not commit to it, go backtrack a little bit, go with more of that natural color, try that ghosty stuff or black and uh, throw that white in there, guys. Those, those four colors are, are hands down my four number, uh, my four best top colors. Now gear. I'll cover gear real quickly because um, it can be as easy or simple as you want it, or you can go out and, and get the nicest frog gear um, that you want. I will say, 
I have tried just about every frog rod on the market and hands down, my absolute, I don't care what brand, what price point, whatever, my absolute, no, I mean, absolute favorite uh, frog rod is gonna be the X Pride 7.3 Extra Heavy. It's not too long, so you don't want a long rod where your tip is slapping the water every time. It's got a soft enough tip to make that, that frog walk side to side, but it gets in that backbone quick, that extra heavy to get those fish out. It's a super, super light rod. Uh, I pair that up with a couple different braids. If I'm going more of a finesse frog, I'm going 50 pound Max Quattro. I like that Max, Max Quattro because it is literally it's thinner than the other braids on the market. You can cast it a long ways. If I'm fishing real real thick stuff, then I will definitely go with a 65 pound braid. And I, if I'm fishing like uh, lily pads and something like that, that when those fish eat, they're gonna get down in that grass or down in that stuff, then I will actually go with, I got both lines rigged up. This is actually that Sunline uh, FX2. It's more of aggressive braid. It's more, uh, it cuts through the grass a lot better uh, than, the, than the Max Quattro. But I love this Max Quattro. You know, I pair that up with a Metanium. And that's on dry braid. And I just threw it like 40 yards. I mean, it's, the Metanium is such a smooth reel. Again, that is a very, very awesome combo. Down below in the video description, I will link some of my favorite or at least one of my favorite um, budget friendly combos. But if you guys are just getting into frog fishing, take your, your heavy uh, jig rod and a little bit smaller frog, tie on some braid and you guys will be good. But uh, if you guys, I, if you can, you will love this rod. You know, there's other things you can use it for, but throwing a frog, 7.3 extra heavy. I mean, I just threw that thing almost 60 yards. Um, it is a phenomenal combo. Obviously, put your favorite reel on there. I like to go with a seven or an eight to one gear ratio uh, reel. I won't go with a five or a six to one. I want to be able to, when that fish eats, I want to be able to get to them. And these new reels, even though they're high gear, gear ratio, they still have a lot of torque to get those fish out. So don't worry about that. So a seven or an eight gear ratio reel. And again, like those that braid I talked about, but frog fishing, is so much fun. Um, as soon as I shut off this video, I'm gonna go make a few casts here, but uh, hopefully that simplified it for you. And hopefully you advance frog guys, you learn something, you know, always have that follow-up bait, bend out your hooks accordingly, depending on what type of vegetation you're fishing, trim those legs to get it easier to walk. Again, if you're having a hard time walking a frog, a lot of times it's because you're hitting it too hard. Just be real subtle, tap, tap tap just real subtle with that rod tip to get the, that frog walking and and a lot of times you know walk it fast tip, 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 tip. get that thing moving when you come up to the edge of the the grass line or the other uh, edge of the the lily pads whatever it may be that key area you know let it sit there for a second twitch twitch you know don't be too fast uh, and you guys will have a blast. If you guys have any questions, please leave it down below. Leave them down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. But again, I will link everything down below in the video description because I know that I covered a lot of it. I held up some frogs I didn't even talk about, so probably link those two. Those are all specialty frogs. Um, but guys, this summertime, I challenge you, get out on your pond, get out on your local lake, look for that thick vegetation, and go throw a hollow belly frog, hollow body frog, and hang on because you're gonna have some of the best, biggest blow ups you've ever had in your life and uh, you guys are gonna have a blast. As always guys, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, like clockwork. We haven't missed one in years. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on the notifications. We're still getting it. Every video we put up, we get people commenting that they have to go find our videos because they're not getting the notification. So make sure the notification bell is turned on. And other than that, I don't know what else. Go search Tactical Bassin. Go to our website. Sometimes it's a lot easier to find certain videos on our website, tacticalbassin.com. Go to the search bar, type in 
summer fishing or frog fishing, everything will be laid out a lot easier and simpler, for, simple, simpler than on YouTube. Sometimes it's hard to search on YouTube, but uh, turn on notifications because we are putting out videos three times a week to help you guys catch more and bigger fish. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.